Okay, so this is the sixth uh, demo in the series, and where we left off is that we were able to fix this bar up here and cinch it up to the top for navigation. And you'll see that we've got these little descenders hanging out. You can barely see them out from underneath. And if you remember, that's because we have this top bar as a fixed position. And that means that it is sort of yanked out of the document flow. And the browser doesn't realize then that it's, uh, it thinks it's not taking up any space because it's on top of everything now. And so those articles jump all the way to the top of the viewport now because there's nothing up above them because this has now been yanked out of the document flow. So let's go ahead and see how we can fix that. Well, let's look at the HTML first. And let's go to source code. And let's take a look at this text here. Well, if I select it here, you, it highlights it in, in the code view. And you can see that this is an H1. But I want you to notice that it's inside of a header. Well, if you look at the structure of this page, every article has a header. Okay, and what's happening is that because, this is the point I need to make, when you click on this link right here, like any of these links uh, in the href, what happens is it jumps down to this spot, and it's going to align that article to the top, very top left coordinates underneath that nav bar. So what we need to do is we could say, all right, well, any, any header okay we're gonna say any header that is inside of an article okay if we're gonna only use one header per article that's typically what you do okay because it's the heading information of the article then what you would do is give this header a top padding so that even though the article is gonna start way up here the padding on the top of the header will bump the text down Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to select this word header and I'm going to go over here and add a new rule. Oops, sorry. Add a new rule, not edit. And you see it's trying to tell me that it wants to do for link one header. Well, I want it to happen to all headers that are in all articles. So we're going to change this to article like this. So your rule should look like compound and it should say article space header. Okay. And what I'm going to do is go down to box for box model. And I'm going to take off where it says same for all under padding. I'm going to tell it to have a top padding of 50 pixels. And if I apply it, see it bumps it down. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to save it. And you see that now it starts a little lower. And whenever I click to it, ah. Okay, now I can actually see my content. That's a good thing. All right. So now the next question you might have is, all right, well, this is a little frustrating. I want it to look a little bit more interactive than that so that you can see that it's all on the same page. It's also a good uh, navigational cue. It, you know, sometimes JavaScript adds functionality that makes things prettier but maybe more f fussy. Um, sometimes it's just purely for the art sake you know, artistic sake of adding it. But in this case, adding a page scroll easing effect so that you know you're on the same page is actually helpful to a lot of viewers because then they can visually see the page moving and that they understand that they are still on the same page, whereas this might, to some viewers, look like you're going to three different, four different pages. And the way that you know up in your uh, URL is that after the name of the document, it will add pound link four, pound link 3, when you click it, pound link 2, so that you know that you're still in the same page. Okay? And by the way, this is a temporary file because uh, I set my Dreamweaver preferences, just so you know, I set my Dreamweaver preferences so that I didn't have to save a file to test a file. So what it does is it generates a temporary file. That's what this TMP stands for. And then it makes some other crap up. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and let's figure out how we're going to add some JavaScript. There are lots of different JavaScript tools that you can use, um, but one of the uh, things that I'm going to suggest that you do is uh, there's a website that's called CSS Tricks. Okay, and it's css-tricks.com. CSS Tricks is a terrific website. The guy who runs it is 
really well known in the development community and you can find snippets and examples of pretty much anything that you want to know how to do. Um, anyway, if you go here, you can go to the uh, search bar and type page scroll. And one of the first hits, it's the second hit actually that comes up, is this uh, CSS tricks. Okay, if you click on that, it's going to bring you to a page that looks like this. And basically, you see here that it tells that it performs a smooth page scroll. Okay, and if you wanted to view his demo, you could view his demo. This is what it's going to do. Okay, this kind of thing. All right, and basically, let's go back. What that's doing, I'm not going to try to teach you JavaScript, don't worry. But basically what it's doing is it's calling this function and it's basically saying any version, anything that is an href, okay, that has a pound, uh, a hashtag symbol, but uh, not something that is only a pound, because you can actually do that for testing purposes or for other JavaScript. So anything that's basically like pound something, like pound link one, pound link two then it's going to apply this function that is going to have this animation easing effect. Okay, So now we can't just copy this and paste it in all as well. Notice here that it says jQuery. Okay, Where it says jQuery up here, that means that we actually have to go and download a full jQuery library. jQuery is a framework of JavaScript that allows for people to work within that framework. It builds a lot of classes and a lot of, um, uh, not classes like a, a teaching course, but like a, builds a lot of like little modular units that people can work with that it's easier than just regular old JavaScript. So what you first need to do is you need to go to jQuery.com and actually if you, let's just do that here. Go to jQuery.com, and here, if you click Download jQuery, it takes you to this page, and then you can scroll up under. You can read this if you would like. I'm going to suggest that you use jQuery 1 because you can see that it's um, it's a uh, it's okay for like Internet Explorer. jQuery 2 is not yet, so or it's not ever going to be. Anyway, so what I want to do is where it says Download the compressed version, I'm going to right click and I'm going to save link as and then we are going to go to save it and I'm not just going to save it direct. well I guess nah. I'll go ahead and save it directly inside of my uh, folder okay a lot of times I'll make a new folder and call it JS but we don't have to do that make it a little simpler and just save it right there inside of your folder and you can leave the the name exactly the same Okay, so now we have the full library. So the first thing that we want to do before we use this code, all right, is that we want to go over here into our source code. And up up here inside of the, where, right after the link for the style sheet, I'm going to drop down to the next line. And I'm going to type an open bracket, and I'm going to type script. And you see it turns red, it recognizes that. And then... I'm going to uh, go, you can hit enter if you want, or just, anyway, I'm going to hit space, and then as soon as I s hit space, it recognizes that I'm about to type an attribute, so I can tab down to where it says SRC, that means source, and then we need to find a source file, and it allows me now to browse, I'm going to click enter, and now I can browse, and I can find my jQuery file, and by the way, you see this temp file? That's sometimes what happens whenever you uh, don't have to where you make it so you don't have to save your files before testing sometimes it'll like make these stupid temp files and it won't delete them it won't clean them up properly anyway I'm gonna select this jQuery file okay and now I can end my tag like that and then automatically it should end your script tag like that if you had your autocomplete turned on like I told you at the beginning now that we've loaded the full jQuery library now I can go back to uh, my web page here and I can take all of this information I can copy it and then right after the jQuery library is loaded and it has to be after must be after I need to make a new script tag okay and then I need to just close it I'm not gonna do source or anything like that and then inside of these script tags I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paste that function I'm just gonna 
tab this in so it's a little bit cleaner looking. Okay, so what's happening here is that first, right here, I'm calling the full jQuery library so it loads it into the browser's cache. And then after that, I'm calling a customization that will work with the jQuery library and it will customize certain properties of it so that it can create this animation for us. And again, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, so any ahref, and what this asterisk means, it's a wildcard, it means everything. So any, like all hrefs that start with pound, but that are not only pound, okay, then it's going to apply uh, this easing effect to it. So I'm going to save this and let's go ahead and we're going to test it out again. Okay, now if I click on it, see what happens is it, now you can see how it makes it easier to visualize how it scrolls all on the same page, whereas before it wasn't so easy to understand. Okay.